Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this Grumpy Boys sheet, and remember to like and subscribe to reclaim your honor next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Prince Zuko, or if you're hiding out with your Uncle Iroh, Lee. Which is actually short for, LEAD ME TO THE AVATAR SO I CAN RECLAIM MY HONOR AND TAKE MY PLACE ON THE THRONE! Who... who are you? Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, it's Hot Boy Fall. So we need to bring the heat with metaphorical and literal firepower. Next, we need some swords, but not at the expense of throwing out the fire. Finally, instead of learning to destroy, we'll learn to protect, with a redemption arc fueled by the best dang uncle a kid could ask for. But if you want redemption from people stealing your data, why don't you get a little Surfshark VPN in your life? Surfshark is a virtual private network that encrypts your data while you're looking for the avatar online. Once you find him, you can actually cover all of Team Avatar, since Surfshark works across all all of your devices. I'm talking browsers, smartphones, tablets, and gaming consoles. You don't want to worry about hackers, you want to make it to the top of Fall Mountain. My favorite way to use Surfshark is to check out content that's regionally blocked on sites like Netflix. It's basically a massive content expander that also protects your data. It's amazing. Also, it's super cheap. Sign up with the link in the description for 85% off a two-year subscription and get three free months. That breaks down to less than $2 a month. Surfshark has really helped me out in the past few months. Let them help you out too. Now back to the video. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that your dexterity and charisma are looking good. Charisma will be number one. Firebending is all about passion, and passionate is a nice way to describe your intensity. Oh, Zuko? Yeah, he's very, um... He's very passionate. Dexterity next, your swords aren't that long and you're pretty darn good at not getting hit. Intelligence after that, you're a really great strategist trained by the Dragon of the West. Follow that up with Constitution, you fight three-fourths of Team Avatar by yourself until you become the final fourth. Oh, and Sokka, so three benders and Sokka, that's slightly more impressive. Strength is a bit low, we'll get the athletic skill to round out the ability checks, but we'll dump wisdom. Insight is an issue of yours, you spend most of your time trying to impress your father, who not only doesn't appreciate you, but actively belittles you whenever he can to hold up another sibling as the perfect child. Sounds really frustrating and not at all relatable. Zuko is a human, but you could make him a fire genasi if you wanted him to be weaker and not Zuko. Humans get a feat. We'll start off with the dual wielder feat, giving you plus one to AC when you have a weapon in each hand. You can wield anything not specifically heavy or two-handed for dual wielding. I think scimitars would be the most accurate things for what Zuko uses, but rapier is technically the most powerful option if you want a power build. Bump your intelligence and charisma with your two free points, take investigation for your skill of choice, and modify the noble background for history and intimidation instead of persuasion. Things didn't change when the Fire Nation politely asked to rule everything. We're kicking things off as a fighter, letting us pick up two skills from the fighter list like acrobatics and athletics. It's pretty standard for physicality. In case you didn't notice, we dumped wisdom, so monk isn't really an option. That's actually fine though, as two weapon fighting on a monk is kind of redundant with martial arts. Speaking of, Grab the two-weapon fighting style to add your ability modifier to your offhand weapon attacks. Remember, anybody can fight with two weapons using your bonus action for the offhand attack, but that typically doesn't get the damage modifier. Also, the weapons have to be light, but at level one, we already fixed those up thanks to the dual wielder feat and the two-weapon fighting style. Humans are pretty fun sometimes. You get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Don't worry, just because it has wind in the name, that doesn't mean it's airbending. It's still in character to use it. We're multi-classing at level two, so so take a shot of water because it's about to get hot. Sorcerers get to choose an origin and dragons were the original firebenders, so we'll go for the draconic bloodline. This will double your proficiency bonus for intimidation checks against dragons. Maybe remind them what happened to the rest of the dragons. You're still a villain at level two. You have draconic resilience, giving you one extra HP every time you level up in sorcerer, and your AC is 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. Basically, it's just free mage armor so you can keep it light while you fight. To continue, monking up this not monk, take the jump spell to triple your jump distance for a minute. 
Wait, did I just make our first spell not a fire spell? That's stupid. Burning Hands forces a dexterity saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier. Failing that, they take 3d6 fire damage, half as much on a success, unless they have evasion. Boy, wouldn't it be awful if everyone you were fighting had evasion? You could still hit them with ranged spell attacks, like the Cantrip Firebolt that deals 1d10 fire damage on hit. Light helps you see with your dumb human eyes in the darkness with 10 feet of bright light. Dancing Lights creates a bunch of smaller, dimmer lights if you're more into that, up to you. Create Bonfire is another dexterity saving throw that deals 1d8 fire damage to creatures that fail. No half damage here, it's just a cantrip. You can't expect it to do much more than roast marshmallows. I'd feel bad going back to fighter right away, but being conflicted is pretty in character for you. At least second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in the same turn once per short rest. This doesn't give you extra bonus actions, so no extra offhand attack, but it's still nice to get those hits off. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype. Battle masters are great for fighters with a penchant for strategery. Obviously, Obviously, the strongest thing from this subclass is Student of War, giving you a set of artisan's tools of your choice like calligraphy, making you the strongest bender we've made so far. Isn't there an episode where Sokka learns calligraphy? I've underestimated him. You also get maneuvers, special techniques you can spend superiority die on, which are D8s. You got four of these per short rest, which means that you don't need a good night's sleep, you just need to find the avatar. Tripping attack lets you force a strength save on a creature of eight plus your proficiency bonus and dexterity modifier. Failing that, they are knocked prone, which would give you advantage on melee attacks against them. Repost lets you attack a creature that fails to hit you with an attack roll as a reaction, and feigning attack lets you give yourself advantage on an attack roll with a bonus action. All of these get to add your superiority die to the damage when you land them, so your swords will be as sharp as your tactics. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat. The Warcaster feat fixes an issue I'm sure a lot of people have already been mentioning in the comments. With the Warcaster feat, you can use somatic components while your hands are full, so you can fire with your feet with this feat. You also get advantage on concentration checks and can cast spells as opportunity attacks as long as it's only targeting the creature that's too cowardly to fight you. Hey, wouldn't it be terrible if everyone you fought could just disengage for free as a bonus action? If that were the case, you'd really need to take them down on your turn, so it's a good thing that 5th level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice as an action, 4 times with an action surge, or 5 times with an action surge and an offhand weapon attack. Hey, wouldn't it be terrible if the avatar had like a base 20 AC? I think I'm starting to realize why Zuko is always so angry. Back over to Sorcerer because two flamethrowers per day isn't great for a firebender so you can recover some of those spell slots with a font of magic full of sorcery points or you can make your weapons magical with imbuing touch. Give yourself advantage on an ability check with empowered reserves or a d4 of temporary HP for every sorcery point you spend with Sorcerer's Fortitude. Weapons and fire would probably be my picks though it's not like you're a pushover maybe put it in your health too. For this level spell, Shield will give you some more non-monk monkishness, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction until the start of your next turn to burn up any attacks as they're coming in. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you spend sorcery points to do special things. Careful spell lets you choose an amount of people equal to your charisma modifier to automatically succeed on saving throws against spells you cast so you can sculpt spells. Hey, how awesome would it be if your whole team had evasion? Empowered Spell lets you reroll damage die equal to your Charisma modifier, which will help keep your fire damage consistent. For this level spell, Scorching Ray is a great option for opportunity attacks as it deals 2d6 fire damage per ball with up to 3 balls of fire, so you could deal 6d6 fire damage as a reaction. You can also use it with your action and aim each fireball at a different member of Team Avatar. I'm talking Aang, Jake Sully, Natiri, wait, that's the wrong Avatar. Fourth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. I think your dexterity could use some help. Plus two isn't exactly a master swordsman, more like a uh, Kokiri swordsman. For this level spell, Agonizer's Scorcher creates a 30-foot line of fire that forces dexterity saving throws on creatures inside, dealing 3d8 fire damage to those that fail. If all of your rival benders are dumb enough to stand in a line, which doesn't happen that often, we'll get something a little bit better next level. Fifth level sorcerers get third level spells, also known as all of the cool spells. Hey, Haste, fly, lightning bolt, dispel magic, this is where the fun begins. But of course, the best third level spell for you right now is going to be fireball to deal 8d6 fire damage to everyone keeping you from your destiny in a 20 foot radius that fails a dexterity saving throw. Fire prints have fireball, sometimes the script writes itself.
Sixth level Draconic Soul Sorcerers get Elemental Affinity, letting you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of spells associated with your Draconic Ancestry, so fire, and you can spend a sorcery point to get resistance to fire damage for an hour. This really is the level Zuko learns to deal with his family, so grab the spell counter spell to shut down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spell's level. Remember when I mentioned lightning bolt was a third level spell? It's perfect just like you, but not in the I'm the prince, I'm better than you kind of perfect. It's more like the you've made mistakes, but the rest of your life is an opportunity to be better and make peace with the person you are kind of perfect. Uncle Iroh is basically Bob Ross with tea instead of paint. Also, Bob Ross was better at fire breathing, but we don't have to get into that. And that'll be enough casting. Lightning Deflection is the highest level stuff Zuko does. Sure, there are higher level fire spells, but it takes a lot out of Zuko to use counter spells, so I'm calling it here. You've still got plenty of martial skills to get anyway. Speaking of that, sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. Let's get that charisma up higher. I have a feeling Azula might try to upcast her lightning, so we need to be ready for that. Seventh level battle masters get to know their enemy, letting you know about the strength, dexterity, constitution score, HP, AC, fighter levels, or total levels of a creature you've studied for a minute. You get two of these per minute of study, and you've definitely been studying Aang, Zhu Kang forever. Well, you've also been studying Katara, Zutara forever too. Is Zoo Everyone a valid ship? Because I'm Team Zoo Everyone. The guy has chemistry with everyone he meets. You can grab two more maneuvers at this level. Parry lets you reduce damage from an incoming hit equal to your superiority die plus your dexterity modifier to stay not dying. Rally lets you give a creature temporary HP equal to your superiority die plus your charisma modifier as an action. Redemption Arc Zuko is best Zuko. Of course, you also get another superiority die to inspire your new friends. Eight level fighters get another ability score improvement. Bumping back dexterity would get it even with our charisma, and you're mostly a fighter at this point and moving forward. But it's good because fighters get more ability score improvements than anyone else, and you need to be better than everyone else if you're going to earn your father's love back. Yeah, we're bad again. It kind of goes back and forth. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. You've officially been on the bad side of all four nations. Congratulations, I guess? 10th level fighters get improved combat superiority, making your superiority die D10s instead of D8s, and you learn your last two maneuvers. Get some more team synergy with distracting strike, giving the next person to attack the target advantage on the roll, and take one for the team with goading attack to force a wisdom saving throw on a creature you hit, giving them disadvantage to attack creatures other than you until the end of your next turn if they fail. Both add the superiority die to the damage. Obviously now, you're using the power of friendship. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, letting you make 3 attacks with your action, 6 attacks with action surge, and 7 attacks after your bonus action offhand attack, which should help you handle your sister, but I don't know man, she's tough. 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your charisma, you're likable, you've got friends, and you should never feel like you need to earn a parent's love. You're their child, not their trophy. Your value is inherent because of who you are as a human being. I'm working through some stuff in this video. 13th level fighters get another use of indomitable. Always worth remembering you can use these on death saving throws, dying is bad, and you just turned good. Can you imagine if Zuko just died right after he turned good? Or if he just showed up to fight Ozai without having to make peace with Team Avatar for all the times he's wronged them? So essentially the complicated part of the character is just fixed with a convenient death and no emotional challenge for any of the characters or audience. That would be like the worst way to end a long running series. I'm glad they didn't do that. Our capstone is the 14th level of fighter for one last ability score improvement, letting us cap off our dexterity so we're just as good with our martial arts as we are with our fire. Martial arts just means arts that are martial. It doesn't have to be monk stuff, but thank you for the comment. It pleases the algorithm. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're great at protecting yourself with 19 base AC thanks to your draconic bloodline and the dual wielder feat, and 24 once you add a shield spell on top of that or counter spell for magical mischief. You're also great at helping your friends with battle master maneuvers specifically focused on helping the squad. Finally, you've got some consistent damage with four attacks per round, a cap modifier, and magical damage if your DM believes in the blessings of the class feature variants on Earth Arcana. For weaknesses, you got limited spells, so higher level casters could eventually break through your counter spells. You're also lacking wisdom, which means bloodbending, hold personing could be an issue, as well as peer pressure from your family. Finally, this is not the best way to gish. Just shooting straight down the Eldritch Knight path would give you more spell slots, an extra ability score improvement, another action surge, and another extra attack. The only reason I didn't do that is Eldritch Knights get a teleporting ability, and Battlemaster suits the whole banished general thing better. 
But again, your value doesn't come from being perfect. It comes from being you. Make peace with your family drama, embrace your found family, and do everything you can to keep them safe. Just watch out for higher level casters. They could end a fight with you lightning fast. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for character sheets of this boy, or if you just want to support the channel, and subscribe to Tulak and Mango to watch me play video games.